It's been a long time since I did that Sansevieria propagation video, so I figured I'd give you guys an update on those plants. But not only that, in this video I'm going to show you guys more snake plant propagations, but I'm going to be changing it up a little bit and doing a little experimenting. Let's go! What's going on my plant people, my plant fam? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And we're going to talk snake plants again. Part two. Now I have this snake plant right here. This is the one that's gonna be the experiment, but I'm not gonna talk about that one yet. I have this one right here, but this I just wanted to show off because isn't this so cute? This is a new variety and I'm super hyped up about it. It is really pretty. I can't wait to propagate that one, but it's not ready yet. So I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm just gonna leave it there for some decoration. First things first, we're gonna check out those propagated plants that I did from the first video. If you haven't checked out that first video, I'm gonna drop it right up here and down below so you can go check that out so you know what plants I'm talking about. Remember when we were talking about propagating our snake plants in water and when I found out, I was like, what? I didn't even know that. Guess what? These are still the same leaves. I don't even know how many months it's been already, but those are the same leaves. Now, as you see here, remember I said it was gonna shrivel up and crisp up? Well, it didn't, it did a little bit shriveling up, but it's not doing so much. What it is doing, as you can see right here, is actually crisping up. So, I mean, it, it is going to shrivel up a little bit, also depending on how thick your leaf is. But this one is relatively thick, not too thick, but as you can see, it's starting to crunch up. Oh, it's again! We got another one! We got another one! Still the same plant leaves from months ago. It keeps going. You can get multiple cuttings off of one leaf. And I just proved that again! Because this is the same leaf. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I am believing it. Obviously, I'm staring right at it, but isn't that nuts? This plant leaf doesn't have a baby on it right now. It could have been because I took it off. I don't really remember. But what I do see that's relatively new are roots growing from this one. Now, this one is an awesome thing also because it may not be giving me another plant baby, but it's giving me roots. So if I wanted to, I can, you know, put this in soil right now and it'll catch on. Or, you know, you can continue leaving it in water and wait for another propagation baby. Now, these two starfish were from the original video. Now, those were the ones that I put into a larger pot and I propagated different pieces from. Now, these two plants were actually put in two separate pots, as you saw in the first video. But it turns out that that pot, I guess, was maybe just too small or small at the base. So these plants still kind of like moved around. They were kind of top heavy. So I needed to find a bigger base. And that is why I transferred these two plants into the same pot that is a lot wider. So if the plant decides to move or if I'm not being gentle with it and it starts to move, as you can see here, the leaves actually hit the base of the plant and it doesn't topple over. So this was a win and this worked out. As you can see also, one of them gave me another baby. Oh, look at these cute babies. See, this is a new one. So I can take that one off and propagate it like I did in the first video. But these two are doing pretty darn good. You can see the light green and new growth. Now this piece was the baby that was separated from one of these plants in the first video. However, I'm still having the same problem that I was having in the first video, which was that it is top heavy. And as you can see here, it keeps falling over. But also the cactus mix is really dry, which is kind of how they like it. But also the only problem is with that is that it's not heavy. Remember this one? This one was a cute little frog planter that I had that has a bunch of the propagated babies from the water vase in the first video. Well, uh, as you can see here, I only have one left. And the reason why is because I neglected it. I absolutely forgot about this planter. I really did. Yes, I know snake plants of all varieties thrive on neglect. However, when it does come to propagation phase and you just propagate it out of the water into soil, you kind of have to get it acclimated to its new environment, being that it's coming from water into soil. The only problem is I was not mindful and I was not paying attention to my plant and those pieces died. So the only one that survived is this one and it is looking like it's struggling. However, it is still alive and now that I'm being more mindful about it, it's starting to grow again from the bottom. This is a perfect example of being mindful. Damn that mindfulness. I swear, I say that all the time. That is why plants are considered such a good form of therapy because it forces us and or teaches us 
how to be mindful and how to pay attention. And that's exactly what needed to get done with these propagated pieces. I remember those two little end pieces that I snapped off on accident in the video, but I just so happened to tr you know, try to propagate it and see if it worked. Well, those did not work. Those little pieces did not die. They shriveled up and they did not develop any roots. Now, I want to know, did they did not develop any roots because I didn't give it enough time? Because remember, these take months, like two months, three months to actually get propagating or good propagation going. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Jackie, you've already done water and soil propagation. What else is there to propagate with a snake plant? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because as we all know, when it comes to growing plants, there's not just one set way of growing these plants. And that also goes with the medium of how you're growing these plants. You don't always have to grow in soil. You don't always have to grow in water. There are other options. That other growing medium option is called LECA. Now I'm sure I'll get in depth with LECA later on as I know more about it myself, you know, through experimentation. But for now, I've messed with them enough to know that this may work. Now when I say maybe, it's not like I'm new to this because I've had grown a bunch of different plants using the LECA before, but this is only through propagation. So I have not made it a permanent fixture in any of these plants. But why not try this time being that I have the LECA balls available and I am doing a propagation update, so why not try to put this plant right here into some LECA so I can get rid of that soil. Let's try it. First, when you're using these LECA balls is that you have to wash them. I found through my experience that I did not have to soak these LECA balls for 24 hours. I didn't see a need for that. However, I did see a need for rinsing out these LECA balls at least two to three times because you're going to get like this brownish water. So until that brownish water is relatively gone, keep washing them balls. <laughs> keep washing the balls. <laughs> I'm 36 years old and I still find the word balls funny. Now this is the plant that I'm going to try to put in LECA. Bean that has been giving me so many problems. So what I do have is a little glass bowl. Yes, I know that you can do this with LECA balls, but I do not know if you can use this with actual stones. I guess we're going to find out and maybe this will lead to an update number three. What I got to do here is I have to empty out the soil. You want to try to get rid of the soil as much as possible from the roots. You could rinse it under water to get it all out, but of course this is cactus mix and is dry as fuck, so you're not going to really have a problem. Remember when I cut this one from the first video, I used a knife and whatnot, that I wound up getting a little bit of the root system? Well, this little aerial root right here, or I'm assuming this is an aerial root, I mean it is attached separately. This right here was not there at the time, so this was new. Now if your plant was already in water, such as like let's say you propagated it in water, then the transition won't be that bad. So you can just put it from water to water, that should not be a problem. But when you're starting from dry to the LECA, I have learned through many plant deaths again that they like it dry. Now I want these rocks at the base because when these roots want to latch onto something, they're going to be holding on to or wrapping around the stones and the LECA ball. So I need something as the base. So I have that there. And all I'm going to do is put those LECA balls right on top. And you're going to cover it all the way to the top of the bowl. Come on. You ain't moving. You ain't moving at all. Nope. Hey, look at that. Isn't this awesome? You don't even need no soil. This is fantastic, yo. My goodness. Yo, this is gonna work. I know this is gonna work. I think Sansevieria is a good place to start when you wanna try to convert from soil to LECA, only because, well, one, they're, they like it dry. They like to be neglected. They like to, you know, be ignored. And they also don't require a lot of water. I've learned that when you're taking a plant from soil directly into a water or a LECA environment, those roots will kind of rot. I mean, eventually they will grow again, if they ever do grow again, but it's a pain in the butt. So I took advantage of being that those plants like it dry, those roots were dry, so it would transfer a lot easier. And being that you don't really have to water it that much, I think this will be okay. I mean, you could water it now that it's here, but you're not going to fill it up. Now when it is time to water, being that let's say this container right here, it's not that big, you're going to fill it up almost like me about halfway or until 
the plant absorbs the water that it needs. If there is any excess water, you may want to drain that out. So that is why you want to put a little bit of water at a time, at least in a little bowl like this. Another thing that I've noticed when it comes to these Lekka balls is that when you rinse them or you wet them, they hold on to moisture. So after you rinse them like I did before, I transplanted them into here, those clay balls still have moisture. So that is why I am not going to water them for at least another week or two. Then I would water it. Isn't this so cute? This is freaking adorable. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like putting another one in like a... This is looking so cute. Now this snake plant has been with me for a while and is pretty tall. However, it keeps dying off a little bit. I still get new growth, but it keeps dying out. So I'm going to be moving this and transferring it to a smaller pot that's going to be more feasible than this big ass thing. But as I look at the roots, I may want to try this Lekka thing out because I do have a vase right here. So let's see. So look at that. This one detached altogether, like really altogether. Uh, did not expect that either. See, I did not. See, I don't expect these things. This one just kind of came out. So I'm going to be putting this one in the vase because I want to experiment with the base of it. That actually broke. Okay. Two. Now I got two Sansevieria plants. I have the ones with roots. This is the one that has no roots. So I guess we're going to find out if it ever does develop some roots in this Lekka stuff. So, remember I did put Lekka on the base of this, just like you would put base soil inside of your planter or your container. Same concept, the roots are, as they grow, they're going to grow down through that medium, which would be the Lekka. After you put that on there, now we fill up. Of course, this one, we're going to have to wait and see and see how this one works out. The same thing with this vase too. Being that both of these are in Lekka, I'm going to be watching out for them and seeing how they act and see how they like being in Lekka. So I guess I will do a part three update on these plants and any other future snake plants I decide to put into Lekka as well. But so far so good. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got a kick out of some Sansevieria propagation and also finding some other creative ways of putting your plants together. And if you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and then some in between. And last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. A little bit DIY projects, a lot of funny memes, and you know, some little personal side. Until we meet again, my plant obsessed people, remember one day at a time, one plant at a time. Until the next episode, you guys, peace and love.